Hello, it's the uh, dynamic uh, duo, Shackleton and uh, Paul. Today, in this video, I'm going to talk about the unprecedented conditions in Europe um, in terms of the unbelievable heat, you know, across much of Europe. And, uh, you know, I'll relate it to the very, very wavy jet stream that is dynamically changing so we get waves of heat you know right now you know four day wave of heat and then that will be replaced by waves of cold and then back to heat so we're talking about temperature anomalies of um, plus eight degrees celsius minus eight degrees celsius multiply by 1.8 and that's about 14 15 degrees fahrenheit so to give you an example, um, February 3rd, um, Northwest Italy, plus 27 degrees Celsius is the absolute uh, temperature. And that's 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Switzerland, plus 24 Celsius or 75.2 Fahrenheit. And parts of Spain, plus 28.4 degrees Celsius. That's over 82 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, and it's February 3rd, you know, it's, it's winter. So why are these incredibly unbelievable heat waves are there? Well, as a friend of mine says, the abrupt climate bus has left the station. So let me get right into showing you the data. But before I do that, um, I've been doing a lot of reading uh, recently. And people have said that I should actually talk about some of the books that I'm doing. So this is a book called The Astronaut Maker. And the author is Michael Cassett. It's about, it's a, it basically says on the front, the real book about the manned space program would be a book about George Abbey. Okay, George Abbey was, um, you've never heard of him, I'm sure. I just want to read a little bit. First of all, I'll show it to you so you can freeze the frame if you want to um, look at it yourself. Um, if you have any interest at all in space, I highly recommend this book. Um, it was a fascinating read. So George Abbey was one of the most elusive and controversial figures in NASA history. He was called by those within the agency the Dark Lord, the Godfather, or UNO, which is short for Unidentified NASA Official. He was said to be secretive, despotic, a space age Machiavelli. Yet Abbey had more influence on human spaceflight than almost anyone in history. His story has never been told until now. So he was a young pilot, an astronaut, wannabe astronaut, engineer, bureaucrat, finally director of the Johnson Space Center, 37 years with NASA, Basically, he picked, he selected every astronaut class from 1978 to 1987. He decided who got to fly and when, and goes on and on. He had an incredible career there, but, you know, there's uh, basically, um, you probably haven't heard of him. I hadn't until I picked up and read this book, but he was instrumental in all aspects of human spaceflight. A really, really good read giving you all about the inside on the space program. Okay, so getting back to my topic of the of the uh, this of the of this video, probably the next one too is the European heat waves. So, I just want to give a plug for my blog paulbeckwith.net and uh, the last uh, post uh, yesterday or two days ago live interviews on mainstream Canadian national TV programs CTV and CBC News so I had lots of interviews on mainstream media um, over the last month and I show a select number of these um, interviews and so on and please consider um, donating to support my research and efforts and videos to, to bring you to join the dots on abrupt climate change. So, of course, if you're not following me on Twitter, I highly recommend that you do so at Paul H. Beckwith. Just went over 20,000 followers. 
Um, this is, uh, oh, I'll show you a few of these images. These are, so, so there's a festival in Ottawa it's called Winterlude, you know, usually the first two weeks of February. And we have um, an ice rink on the canal, usually going from um, Dow's Lake, you know, a lake on one side to downtown Ottawa on the other side. Only parts of it are open, and it's, of course, you know, with climate change, with global warming, um, the canals open later and later and closes earlier and earlier and, uh, you know, becomes problematic to keep in, in good condition. So there's an ice carving competition. This is a, a, the cold seat. You, know, you, can, you can be given the cold shoulder. Well, here you have the cold seat. You know, luckily, there's some insulation padding there to um, make it better. A couple other images, you know, this is January. I, this is a very interesting cartoon. You know, we've got the Australian fires. We've got volcanoes going off. Um, we have the two missiles taking out the plane. Luckily, a, a war didn't start. Um, of course, the coronavirus. And this is a helicopter crash, um, which um, cost the lives of a number of Americans. Um, of course, this is the big thing, the coronavirus. I wouldn't recommend using this type of mask, or at least I hope I hope it's clean. But uh, I wouldn't recommend, I don't know if this guy, like, is, is this a joke, or did he even know what, it's, what it is? Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there, here's another mask, which is maybe a bit of an overkill here. It makes you look like, you know, a serial killer um, in a horror movie, you know, Friday the 13th. Um, and this is an interesting graphic I just wanted to show you. Basically, this is, uh, at what age do we do our greatest work? And there's all these different professions. So athletes, young, and then music. So the best way is to have a career progression, you know, be an athlete initially, and then move to music and math and physics and exploration and do all these things as you, uh, so here, you know, architecture is a nice job but it looks like you don't want to become an architect till at least till you're at least 40 or something so this is a very interesting um, image and here's me this is in 1995 and I'm playing uh, start, about to start a chess game against Zuzha Polgar who's uh, basically been was the top uh, chess player women's chess player in the world for many many years until she was overtaken by her younger sister Judith so this is North Bay, Ontario tournament in, I finished seventh, I believe, in the overall tournament. I lost the last round to Canada's top player, or I would have finished first in the tournament. The glory days of chess, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll return to those. But my wife Susan says it's, the, you know, the glory days, and she starts playing, you know, simulating violin music when I talk about these great chess victories I had in the past. So um, anyway, um, I've tweeted off a number of different uh, images here, stories on the unheard of warmth across much of Europe, um, 27 Celsius in Italy, 24 in Sweden, Switzerland, and plus 28 Celsius in Spain, winter breaking points, talking about the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, etc. So let's got, get into the nitty gritty. So, so this is the you know a, a news article by this is a great blog, Severe Weather Europe. Okay, it's very up to date and got lots of good posts. I recommend if you're in Europe that you follow this blog and it tells you what's going on. So we have extreme warmth right now. Um, we're in we're at three or four days of extreme warmth. For in early early February, okay, um, they say that these dry phone winds have resulted in extremely high early February values. Okay, um, they don't talk a lot about climate change in this. They blame it on phone winds and other things. But what are what are these phone winds? So if you look at the topography of Europe, these are the mountainous regions here in brown. So what happens is is you have air that is at the top of the mountain, so it's cold and dry. Um, and as it descends downhill, 
Um, it heats up adiabatically, so the air is very, very dry and hot, and then it can come down here. So they're saying that contributed to the record temperatures here, and also going the other way contrib contributed to very high temperatures in Switzerland and also in uh, France. So this is the Alps. And then also um, you had, here's the topography in Spain, and you had very, very hot temperatures up, up in this region. Um, so this is what they're talking about with these phone, phone, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, winds. Um, and uh, I do want to show you a clip here now. This is the, what's happening. You know, I've, you, I came up with the term weather wilding and weather weirding. And, uh, you know, I've talked about the climate casino, being unlucky in the climate casino. So I want to show you um, this video of the cold outbreak over Europe and what's been going on. Okay, so, so what you can see here is plus 8 degrees Celsius, minus 8 degrees Celsius. These are temperature anomalies relative to the climatology, it's called, between 1982 and 2010 average. And this is for the date here um, for the first uh, couple of weeks of February. You can see the dates swift, uh, shifting there. Okay, so let's... Um, show you, get back and show you exactly what's happening there. If I can find my pointer, somebody stole my pointer. So I have to use, uh, do improvise here. Okay, so let's, let's start again at the beginning. Okay, so February 2nd here. And, uh, of course, I can go like this, and it scares the heck out of the cat. But you can see the cold air coming down, and it's pushing the hot air out of the way as we move into February. So, this, so, so as we move into February 6th, like right now it's record temperatures, February 3rd, 4th, 2nd, 1st, maybe end of January, record high temperatures. You know, anomalies up to 8 degrees Celsius in this, and as you go... As you can see, the cold air pushing down. So this will be the jet stream located like this. So the cold, dry air from the Arctic will, will push down. Here it is pushing down over Europe, um, bringing you very, very cold temperatures, record cold temperatures. You know, minus 8 degrees Celsius is the anomaly. And then that's followed by another wave of uh, record, record uh, heat. Okay, so this is the type of condition the jet stream is sweeping um, its way uh, through Europe. Okay, um, these are the top 100 highest temperatures across Europe on February 3rd, 2020. So most of the high temperatures are in Spain, Portugal, southern France, and Italy. And you can see 28.4 Celsius in Valencia, Spain. Um, this is Spain, you know, four top four are Spain, different cities, and then in Italy, 27, and so on. You can see as you go through, you know, all, and it's February 3rd, it's winter. I mean, this is, this is just absurd. Um, so the details are all in this article, and then there's a breakdown of temperatures. These are temperatures in Celsius in the different parts. So what you can see, you know, here's the, you can see the desert, the Sahara, Right, and it's no stretch to see the basically the Sahara is, looks like it's been moving up here into Spain. Uh, you know, all of these extremely warm temperatures, and Madrid's in the center. It's in the geographical dead center. I showed a, a picture. I was standing, you know, on the sidewalk where there was a, uh, a tile saying this is the exact center of Spain. You know, center of Madrid, center of Spain. Um, but you can see. Um, and also, you know, the high temperatures here in northwest Italy and extending also into, into France. This is a closer, this is an expansion of just Spain here. And you can see, you know, up in this region are very, very hot temperatures. Also down here, 